on the night of May 28th, um, of course that's a day I'll never forget because um, it turned my whole life upside down, so to speak. Um, I was coming from a church service, which uh, was something I did regularly. After coming back from my studies in China, um, I had been granted a full uh, scholarship to do my master's there. So I had just come back just a few months later and I was excited, upbeat, you know. Uh, I was happy and just looking forward to uh, starting a life full of possibilities. So, um, of course, being a person of uh, strong faith, I took church very seriously. And that particular night, it was on a Wednesday night, um, I had just come from my church service at the 680 Hotel. So I was walking home after alighting from the Matatu. Uh, from the, from the uh, bus terminal to my home, it's about 300 meters. So it's not a long stretch. So I was walking and on that particular day, there were no lights. There was a blackout in the entire estate. So, but I was not afraid because uh, it's not really an estate that is prone to crime. Uh, so I was, I was just walking and upon reaching just a few meters from my gate, uh, that's when my accosters um, told me to stop and uh, they pulled a gun at me and uh, they proceeded to ask for my phone and the handbag that i was carrying yeah actually that handbag was very dear to me because i just bought it in china and you know it was one of those unique um, personal items that you just want to cling to so um, after seeing wow these guys are, are really serious i i took out my phone and i gave them my bag yeah upon which uh, the tag, one of the tags, asked for my Mpesa pin. I don't know, something just, you know, I was shaking and I could not even remember the, digi the uh, digits. So that's when it happened so fast. Up until today, I always recollect the, the moments of that particular time and I, 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 I can't even begin to imagine that somebody can have such anger and, you know, he just pulled the gun and he pulled the trigger. And when you are shot, it's like things come to a standstill and you start seeing things in slow motion. That's what I remember. Everything was, everything was just in slow motion and I remember falling back because uh, he shot me through my chest and it went out uh, through my, uh, my uh, thoracic spinal cord. So I fell to, I fell to the ground and I was semi-conscious and the guy kept asking for the pin. In fact, he put his foot on the gunshot wound. Yeah, I remember him putting it and, you know, uh, just uh, squeezing it, you know. And I, I just couldn't imagine that somebody can be so heartless. Um, I put, okay, after a few seconds, I think I just lost consciousness completely. And, and the guys just fled. A neighbor heard the gunshot and he came out. He saved my life. His name is Nelly. Cause af uh, okay, after that he ran and uh, went to my home and he called my parents. Yeah. So at that point I was rushed to Metropolitan Hospital and uh, they were okay. They they could not handle my case, so they referred me to Kenyatta National Hospital. Yeah. So uh, that is where. Um, I was, I was received at the casualty and uh, they stabilized me and I, I actually stayed 16 hours without seeing a doctor. So 16 hours later, that's when the doctor came and he drilled a hole on the side to drain the internal bleeding. I, I think it's just by sheer miracle. Yeah, I, I believe God sent his angel to keep me alive because 16 hours later and you're still alive you know, everybody says that's a miracle. And even um, the, the uh, police officers who were attending to my case, they couldn't believe that I was still alive because once, once you're shot and the gun comes out on the other side, you barely survive. So, yeah, I believe I'm a child of miracle. Yeah, so after the blood was drained internally, I was taken, I was transferred to Coptic Hospital. Yeah, 
and that's where the doctors uh, and I went surgery to uh, stabilize my spine and also to cleanse the uh, the gunshot powder because where the uh, the gun passed uh, through so after like a day after the operation uh, the, the doctor came to me and he said uh, I will never walk again so um, of course those words I, I think uh, they're the most dreaded words anybody would want to hear and I remember looking at him and asking him don't you believe in God don't you believe in miracles anything is possible and Okay, at that point, he left, you know, I mean, um, he's a neurosurgeon, so I mean, that was his scientific uh, take on things. Yeah, but I remember telling myself, you know, this, don't let this get to you. I've been able to take it one day at a time and my hope my hope is still uh, okay, anchored on the fact that I am going to walk again I believe I'm going to walk also there's so many people out there who are in this same condition as I am and who have lost hope they have you know maybe they have no one to support them and I would just like to tell them you know keep the hope alive as long as you're breathing you know, as long as you're still alive, as long as there's air in your lungs, you know, there's hope. Hope never dies unless you, you let it die. Hope never dies un unless you let it die.